Greetings. Today I'm going to talk about how you can stop these annoying notifications in Jamf, your Jamf software server. These are the type of notifications that show up on user devices, particularly if they have standard uh, user access, they will not be able to stop these without an admin credential. Uh, I've definitely seen this on macOS Ventura. Fortunately, in the latest version of Jamf, we have some tools to uh, fix this problem. So you can see we executed this terminal command and there's a link to that in the comments below or description below, sorry about that. And it outputs this information we need from these apps to stop these notifications granularly. So that's what we're gonna cover first. And then if you want fast forward to the uh, closer to the end of this video where we will discuss the workflow for stopping all notifications altogether. So both of those uh, can be configured. So that's what we're doing here on the left side of this screen in terminal and then on the right side you can see all these apps that are allowed in the background that we uh, want to control these notification settings for granularly. You're going to want to do this on a few different client commuters uh, in basically any client computer in your Jamf with a different uh, configuration or different app suite uh, you'll need to run this terminal command to figure out what this data is so just remote into those computers run this command and then copy and paste the output into a text editor where you can um, read it and search it very easily uh, to deploy your configuration so that's what we're doing here just going to go ahead and log out. These can be tricky to get right, so make sure you block a lot of time on your calendar to test these out in a test environment before deploying them live. And uh, make sure you read a lot of the documentation that Champ has and the community forums just to make sure you're doing this the way you should. Um, I'm definitely not an expert at this, I'm just showing you my basic general dirty configuration so it's functional though all right logged into Jamf we're at the computers configuration profiles manage login items and this is where we're choosing these rule values and then rule comments so in this case uh, we also have rule types and we can just keep adding these in in a long chain until we get them all the bases covered for every app so that's what we're doing here so let's scroll down we'll add another one we'll look at our text editor over here where we copied and pasted that terminal output uh, from a couple computers and so in this case we can see zoom and we can see a name a developer name a type uh, disposition identifier so these are the things we want so that type isn't doesn't seem very app specific so we'll look for something else in this case we'll just take the application name search for that and then we can kind of toggle through our data until we find what we're looking for so we've searched for zoom and now we can see an embedded identifier in this case us.zoom.zoomdamian the background program we can see this in this instance as well. So that's what we're going to add. So our team identifier is our bundle identifer, us.zoom.damian. And when in doubt, you can add the in this case the us.zoom.zoomdamian as every single rule type. Just keep adding them in because um, you may not know if uh, the bundle identifier is the embedded I item identifier. So in this case, just adding more will uh, cause one of them to apply and stop that app notification from displaying. So in this case though, we just use the bundle identifier and that worked for us. 
We can do the bundle prefix though. And for that, we'll just use this name. So that's what I generally do for bundle prefix. Bundle prefix. And then we have this team identifier here for Zoom. So that's pretty clear. So getting these rule values right is, is helpful. And, uh, but not every app gives you the same clean output. So it, it can take some time to get these right. Next we'll look at Xerox Corporation and we can see that we have one of these cases where we just don't have every single parameter as human readable as we'd like. So we're looking for one that has something we can work with. In this case, we have uh, an embedded item identifier of com.xerox.analytics agent. So that will be the item we can use. And then we also have a team identifier there in number nine, which starts with golf five nine Yankee. So we can um, add that one in with just a copy and paste. There we go. And then we'll do a bundle identifier and pull in our name, which is the same thing as the embedded item identifier. They're using the same com.xerox.analytics agent. So Reading these can definitely be confusing, but you know there is a pattern there, and the more you do it, the more you'll establish cause and effect. All right, so we've done Zoom, we've done Xerox. Just searching through Xerox a little bit more, see if anything pops up here. Not seeing anything there. And we'll go ahead and just put that in both categories just to be sure and then we'll save this out. So that is your workflow. And now we can go back to the client computer after the config profiles pushed out and we can see that these all but one we, we can't we're not getting this log um, to stop displaying uh, and I believe that's from nudge and you can see that if you remember the text editor and the LDS um, inference maybe you could call it an Easter egg uh, that's part of what's happening there so Got to work on that. There we go. Um, org.churchofjesuschrist.nudge.logger. So that developer who's made some really awesome open source software also has uh, some biblical Easter egg uh, text in there, if you will. And in this case, that is precisely what we're going to use to stop the notification from Nudge software from annoying the end user. So we've copied our URL. We will edit this configuration again. And in this case, we're going to use our bundle identifier, paste it in. We are going to use a bundle identifier pretext, paste in the same URL just in case, save it out, distribute to all and then go back test check test client and see if this configuration profile grayed out still didn't not sure what's going on there um, not many of these files are human readable so we may have to lose this battle um, and take another approach so that's what we're going to do now all right so say you want to just stop all notifications. This is what we're going to cover now. Uh, this is not granular or granular. This is binary. It is an 
a bit of an all or nothing approach. So we will start by logging in the JSS, going to our configuration profiles. This is going to be a new configuration profile. And we're going to give it a name that describes what it does. This kills all notifications. So that's what it's going to be called. If you want to use a little softer language, you could use stop all notifications. You do you. So now we're looking for notifications. And I passed it. It was right there. Uh, scrolling too fast. And so now I'm going to keyword search it because then it will just show up. And this is where we use this little magical bundle ID we learned from the Champ Community User Forums. We're going to type this in. First, I was going to give it an app name, but then I said, oh, that's searching for actual apps. So in this case, we would just put this bundle ID in, which is the bundle ID to rule them all. And that is com.apple.com. BTM in Bluetooth Tango Mike November notification. And I'll have a link to that, or I'll put a I'll have the text for that in the description below. So down here we're gonna disable everything. We're just looking at our options here. So we are gonna not allow notifications. So there are options here, but we are going for the disable everything approach. Do what's right for you. Test in the test environment before deploying to your fleet or large portions of your fleet. Maybe you want some notifications. I don't think I want any, but in this video, we're just going to test this out on a single computer. That configuration has been saved out. So we can see our bundle ID. And now just kind of looking to see how it displays when it's saved mm -hmm. out. And what I'm actually doing here is I'm comparing and contrasting what my screen looks like to what the user who took a screenshot of their configuration posted into the Jamf user form. So that's just a strategy you can use if you're not just following a screencast, but you're learning from screenshots on the user forum. So in this case, they used critical alerts, and we are going to disable those as well for our test configuration, leave all this the same, and after that, we will save out again. Here we go, control S or save, and you can scope before saving, but I like to save, edit, scope, save takes longer and I think it's just a more stable workflow so in this case we're gonna pop this onto my computer uh, this is a test computer of course and we will see how it goes we'll use this computer in a testing environment and see if this does what we want it to do in any case that's all I got for you today let me know what you think of this video in the comments below hopefully it helps you out let me know if you have any questions I'll try and answer them as best I can Thanks for watching. We will see you around.